this introductory lecture, I'm going to uh, define what ethics and philosophical ethics are. So ethics is a normative domain, which is distinct from other normative domains like law and etiquette, that addresses the question of how we ought to live. So I'm going to unpack this definition, um, starting with the idea of uh, what normative means. So imagine a newspaper headline that says this, team of scientists discover that abortion is morally wrong. If you think about that, it should strike you as a little puzzling. Um, what is it that scientists could discover that would show that something is morally wrong, right? Science is very good at discovering all kinds of um, or called descriptive facts, right? Things that um, are the case. So we can think about, um, for example, you know, the fact that electrons are, you know, subatomic particles and that, you know, they have a negative charge. Um, we can think about, you know, really big kind of facts like, like, you know, the age of the universe or the size of the universe. We can think about facts about us, like our brains and how, you know, they're, they consist of a bunch of, of neurons and how neurons, you know, uh, communicate with each other via uh, neurotransmitters across a synapse. All of these kinds of facts and many, many more are things that science can discover. Um, those are descriptive claims. They're descriptive claims about how the world is, right? In contrast, a claim like this, the claim that abortion is morally wrong, is not a descriptive claim. It is a normative claim, right? Um, normative claims uh, are a very different kind of, of claim than a descriptive claim, right? So uh, when we think about what philosophers call the is-ought gap, the idea is just that, you know, any number of, you know, facts about how the world is does not by itself imply how the world ought to be, right? So take the claim that slavery is morally wrong. That is clearly a, a normative claim, a moral claim, an ethical claim. Um, that is not at all implying that there isn't slavery. For most of human history, you know, humans have practiced slavery and even still today in various forms, right? Slavery exists, right? So that, that's the descriptively, it's true that there is slavery. Um, normatively, the idea is that there ought not be, right? So that's the difference between a descriptive and a normative claim. Ethics is a domain that deals with, uh, it, it is a normative domain because it is trying to address the question of how we ought to live, right? Not how we do live, but how we ought to live. There are other do normative domains that are important to contrast with ethics. So one would be uh, the domain of law. So there are all kinds of, of um, you know, uh, legal rules, l laws that, that we are supposed to follow. So if the speed limit is 55, then that, that means that you ought to drive 55 miles an hour. Um, so Think about this, though. There are all kinds of laws that have existed in our own country's history. If you think about, you know, the Jim Crow era in, you know, apartheid South Africa, for example, in Nazi Germany, um, there are all kinds of, of laws that are telling you how you ought to live or what you ought to do that we think are not good laws morally or ethically, right? And so that shows that that at least intuitively, at uh, uh, first glance, that the legal domain and the domain of morality, although both normative domains, are different, right? So if you are uh, living in Nazi Germany and the law says that, you know, you know, Jewish people are not allowed to own, own businesses, um, and that you should turn them in and they should be sent to uh, concentration camps, um, 
you know, that is what you ought to do according to the law. But arguably, that is not what you ought to do ethically or morally, right? Go back to our speed limit example. Suppose that you have someone in your car that needs urgent medical attention and, you know, the, the, uh, there's, there's no one really on the road and the speed limit is 55, but you're going 85. Um, arguably in that case, even though you are breaking the law, you might not necessarily be doing something that's morally wrong, right? Assuming you're not putting anyone else's life in danger by speeding and you're, and also by speeding, you're trying to save the person's life who needs urgent medical attention. Um, so we can think about cases of things that are, um, legally wrong, but not morally wrong, and vice versa. We can think of things that are morally wrong, but not legally wrong. So an example of that would be like uh, cheating on your significant other. Many people would say that that is not ethically okay, right? Um, but there's, there's no, it's not against the law to do that, right? So there's another normative domain, the domain of etiquette which has to do with also, you know, it's normative, so it has to do with how we ought to um, um, conduct ourselves, right? What, how, what we ought to do. But it's, again, different from ethics, right? So etiquette would be things like, you know, is it appropriate to burp at the dinner table or not? What is the appropriate swimwear to wear to a beach, right? So that's going to differ in different places, right? In, in the United States, you know, um, the answer to those questions would be one thing. Um, in, you know, Germany or the south of France, the answer to those questions will be di very different. Um, but again, just like the legal domain, we can think about cases of things that are against etiquette, but not necessarily immoral. But we can also think about things that are immoral, but not necessarily against etiquette. And I'll leave that to you to come up with examples. So we have this sense of moral right and wrong, and I want to suggest that it comes from broadly two different sources. One is something like instincts, or more broadly, our biology, and a second would be cultural traditions. So as an example of the former, think of the kind of uh, pretty cross-cultural prohibition against incest. Many people have argued that that is fairly deep in our um, biology. And so there's a case to be made that that sense uh, that, you know, incest is wrong has a, a kind of a, something maybe deeper than, than cultural traditions. But of course, there are also cultural traditions, including religious traditions of, of you know, the sense of something being right, and wrong, right or wrong. Um, for example, you know, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain in Judeo-Christian um, contexts. Uh, that uh, is something that, you know, for people who come from that cultural tradition, they would feel that using the Lord's name in vain is, is, is morally wrong. Um, <clears throat> another example of, uh, uh, you know, a possible something we think is, is, is wrong that comes from something deeper would be this uh, idea of uh, causing another person up close and personal harm. So, for example, pushing someone off a bridge to their death. We feel deeply that that's wrong um, in that, that kind of up close and personal harm. People have argued that that comes from a kind of much deeper uh, biological instinct. Okay, so to illustrate, you know, what I think is the need for philosophical ethics. Think of, let's think about a famous example called the trolley uh, scenario that comes from the philosopher Philip of Foot in the 1970s. So in the first version of the trolley scenario, the trolley's coming down the tracks. It's going to hit these five people if it goes straight. However, if you pull the lever, the trolley will go onto the other track and hit only one person and kill them. So the question is, what should you do in this situation? If you pull the lever, Five people are saved, but the one person dies. If you do nothing, that is, don't pull the lever, then five people die, but the one person is saved. So you're in a kind of dilemma here. Either Whatever you do, whether you pull the lever or don't pull the lever, um, people are going to die. It's just a question of how many. And unsurprisingly, um, 
you could think about your own answer, but you know, there's been a lot of data collected on the trolley scenario and what most people say for this version of it, the lever version, is that you should pull the lever, right? And the intuition here seems to be something like, well, I mean, if you're in a kind of dilemma situation where people are going to die, try to kind of do the least amount of harm that you can. So that seems to be the kind of ethical principle. Do the least amount of harm. Here's a second version of the trolley scenario. And this involves you being on a footbridge with another person where, in this case, the question is, do you push the person physically off the footbridge. If you do push them off the footbridge, then the trolley will hit them, but they will their weight will stop the progress of the trolley, thus saving the five people on the track, right? Don't think about the physics of this too much. It doesn't make sense. It's uh, the kind of, uh, it's a philosophical thought experiment. We could make all kinds of details if you want to make the physics work, but don't worry about the physics of it. Just assume that if you push this person off, then that person will die because they'll get hit by the trolley, but the five people will live. Whereas, if you don't push the person, then the five people on the track will die, but the person on the footbridge will live. Now, if you notice, the math between these two uh, different scenarios is exactly the same. What differs is whether you're pulling the lever, as you are in this situation, or whether you're having to physically push someone off the footbridge. So, Think about this for a second and think about what uh, you would do or what you think the right thing to do is. Um, and what's interesting here is that now we've got a complication. Um, and what I want to suggest is going on here in the, is in the footbridge scenario, we seem to have two different moral intuitions that are coming into conflict, right? Those moral intuitions are, uh, on the one hand, you know, do less harm idea. Uh, but on the other hand, it feels really bad to actually cause up and close, uh, up close and personal harm to another person. That term comes from a philosopher and psychologist, Joshua Green. Uh, that up close and personal harm um, arguably is tying back to these kind of deeper instinctual kind of biological sense of what we should or shouldn't do. Whereas maybe we can see the, you know, do no harm or, you know, killing fewer people, innocent people than more is more of a kind of cultural tradition. In any case, in the footbridge scenario, those two things come into conflict. And what I want to suggest is that this conflict shows that we need some other kind of way of reasoning about um, what we ought to do in a scenario like this, right? So is it is the right thing to do to push the person off the footbridge in the, in the footbridge scenario or not? Um, needless to say, there's a lot of disagreement about this when people, when people think about it. Um, and also interestingly, the data on this shows that people kind of flip. So even though the math is the same, people seem to think that it's morally wrong to push the person, but not morally wrong to pull the lever, right? Even though the kind of results are exactly the same, right? So what I want to suggest is that when we have these kinds of conflicts within ourselves, we need some other way to address or to gain traction in, in figuring out you know, what we ought to do, how we ought to live. So philosophical ethics, then, is simply reasoning about ethical questions. So how we ought to live, what's morally right and wrong. And I want to suggest that philosophical ethics is this kind of um, other way to proceed in those cases, especially in those cases where our, our different ethical intuitions conflict with each other, right? When we have that conflict, what that seems to show is that we can't really trust you know, one intuition over the other. We need a way to move forward in that conflict. And philosophical ethics is one of the ways that we can do that.